estranged father who she told me she hadn't seen in seven years. Teresa did say that her father was a psychicist? Psychicist? Okay. And Nakabachi certainly is a physicist. Physicist. Jesus. Though the scientific community at large has rejected his research. I just, I, I just looked at them. I was like, their eyes, their eyes are, are practically the same. But wait, does this mean that Nakabachi killed his own daughter? I guess so. Or was it someone else who has yet to appear? No, I think it's Nakabachi. There's no way to know. If I could be sure that Nakabachi was the killer, then I would intervene right now. But I'm not. I better keep watching to see what happens. What are you going to do if you kill Carissa's dad right in front of her? What is that? I heard you were giving a presentation on time travel. So I thought about it too. Could it be possible to make a time machine? Carissa wrote a paper on time travel? But when she spoke at ATF, she rejected the very idea of time travel. <gasps> he took, he took her research. He took her research. Although, come to think of it, she was awfully interested in a phone wave. Damn, I forgot how much of a tsundere she was. I'd like your opinion, Papa. We can polish it together, then submit it to the scientific community. I don't know if they'll listen, but just in case, I do have acquaintances at Science Magazine. Oh man, Karisu. Nakabachi takes out the document and starts reading it with a disgusted frown. Oh no. So that's what it was. She didn't have anything dangerous in that envelope, like drugs or a gun. It was just some document. But that raises a new question. Could, it, could that be the Nakabachi paper? According to Suzuha, that document sparked a time travel arms race that ultimately led to World War III and the deaths of 5.7 million people. Oh man. It started with the race between the EU and Russia. And then the Americans got involved and things really went to hell. Oh man. Is that why Carissa's safety is so important as changing divergence? Yeah, but what are you gonna do if you, like, beat up her dad in front of her? She's gonna hate you. I get it now. Nothing is coincidence. Everything is inevitable. Nakabachi flips restlessly through the document, not even trying to hide his irritation. Did I ask you to write this? Well, no, but... You invited me to come, remember? It was the first time we talked in seven years. That's what got me thinking. And as I worked on this thesis, I started to realize it might actually be possible to build a time machine. Oh, Carissa. If the thesis is published, you could have your revenge on the scientific community for shunning you. I wasn't shunned! Nakabachi suddenly shrieks at Kurisu, causing her to shrink back in fear. Those incompetent bastards were just jealous of my superiority! I was the one who gave up on them! Okay. Please don't yell. Nakabachi gives his daughter a disdainful snort, then goes back to flipping through the paper. You read really fast, Papa. Just like I remember. Nakabachi even ignores Karisu's words of endearment. Oh my god, he's an asshole. Not bad. Not bad, okay. You think so? We can submit jointly if you like. I don't mind. Oh, Karisu. No, don't do anything. I'll take care of it. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you- what do I mean? I mean, don't think you're special just because you've got your Flebian Sasis published in some magazine. Oh no. What? Is that how you look at your father? I'm sorry. An awkward silence follows. I feel no warmth between these two. The only thing I feel is distance. Kurisu in particular seems desperate to avoid upsetting her father. Um, 
We haven't seen each other in a while. There's a lot I want to talk about. You're living in Aomori now, right? Oh, Kurisu. Kurisu is even trying to maintain a cheerful tone, but I can see that her expression is stiff. I remember how she said she had trouble dealing with her father. Oh, no. I think my father hates me. She looked so lonely when she spoke those words. Oh. Leave. Oh, one asshole. Huh? Go back to America. Never show your face to me again. What the hell? Beat him up. But... You want my opinion? We'll submit jointly? You don't mean any of that. I know how you think. No, you don't. You haven't seen her in seven years. She sounds like a child with an inferiority complex. Is this pity? How dare you? You're supposed to be my daughter. I... I don't understand. Please come. I am calm. Don't tell me what to do. This is bad. It's almost time for Kurisu's murder. Was it really Nakabachi? Her own father who killed her? I'll tell you why I called you to here today. I wanted to show you my research. Research beyond even what you can imagine. He's jealous of his own daughter, really? I wanted to prove once and for all. That you are nothing compared to me! But that brat in the lab coat ruined everything! I know you were laughing at me too! Don't you deny it! How dare you treat your own father this way! I wasn't! You want my opinion on the thesis? Fine, I'll give it to you. Nakabachi rolls right over Karisu's objections. It's like he doesn't even hear her voice. I'm going to publish it myself. End of discussion. She didn't have to write that for you, buddy. Jeez. You're stealing it, Papa? What did you say? You're stealing my work. I didn't think you would even do something like... <gasps> oh, no! Nakabachi suddenly whirls and strikes Kurisu across the face. What do I do? I know I should do something, but what? Who do you think you're talking to? Oh my gosh! Oh no! Nakabachi throws the paper aside and seizes his daughter by the throat. Oh my gosh! Kurisu gasps for air. Her face twists in pain as his grip tightens. Get him! Oh my gosh! You can't possibly understand how I feel! Why do you have to be so talented? I detest you! I hate your very existence! Oh my god! What a dick! Nobody is allowed to be better than me! Understand? Nobody! Especially not my own daughter! <laughs> That's why I sent you away! I couldn't bear the shame of being your father! Oh my gosh! It's all your fault! It's all your fault! This is completely absurd! He's blaming her for his own failures! I've seen enough! He's the killer for sure! For sure! Get him! I burst from my hiding spot! Stop! <laughs> Get him! I ram him with my shoulder as hard as I can, knocking him away from Kurisu. Kurisu gasps for breath. Oh my gosh! Who the hell are you? I won't let you kill Karisu! I'm going to save Karisu! I'm going to save her and change the future! Even a weakling like me can pin down an old man like Nakabachi. Then I can get Suzuha to call police and... Huh? The memory of Karisu's body flashes through my mind. No, it won't turn out like that. Steadying himself with one hand against the wall, Nakabachi gets to his feet and looks straight at me. The instant our eyes meet, his face twists in rage. Oh yeah, he's gonna be like, you're the guy who mocked me. You! You're the brat who ruined my presentation! Oh my gosh, his presentation? Right, of course. I called him out on his lies in the middle of his presentation. 
Nakabachi is mistaking me for my past self. Understandable since we look exactly the same. How dare you show your face before me! Why does everyone get in my way? Punch him! I know. You and Karisha playing this, didn't you? Didn't you? Punch him, punch him. He's delusional. Punch him. You brat. Well, you brats won't get away with this. Nakabachi glares at me with bloodshot eyes. And then, takes something out of his pocket. At first, I can't tell what it is. But then I see a glint in the dim light. A knife. The blade is about 20 centimeters long. I can't help but shiver at its cold shine. Why is he even carrying something like this? Is he completely insane? Probably. Wait, is that the weapon that killed Karisu? I won't let that happen! Wait, what if Karisu like jumped in the way to save past Okarin? What if this all happened in the beginning and Karisu jumped in the way to save him and then she got stabbed and then she died and then that's how Steins Gate began. Damn! Why is my brain so fixated on that scene? Cause you're traumatized! You'll pay for mocking me! Get him, Okarin! Nakabachi charges like an enraged bull with no sign of hesitation whatsoever. He raises his knife high. I instinctively dodge back. The knife misses me by a hair. Oh, he gathers himself for another strike. The sight of his face twisted in madness and rage fills me with terror. I want to scream. He's going to kill me! No, don't be afraid. I can't die here. The past is already decided. But wait, if the past is already decided, then does that mean I can't save Karisu? <laughs> Okurin, stop thinking. <laughs> I shake off that thought. Just think about saving her. I Apologize! G swallowing my fear, I force myself to stop running away. Instead, I lunge forward. I knock the Nakabachi's hand aside. <gasps> the knife falls from his grip and clatters onto the floor. I leap on it and pick it up. This was easier than I expected. There's gonna be something that happens. It can't be that easy. Stop it, Papa! Oh no. Don't tell me what to do! I look up in surprise. Nakabachi has taken a screwdriver from a toolbox left in the passage. Krisu is walking towards him, pleading with him to stop. She's completely defenseless. Oh, Krisu, stay away from him! You're the one in danger, not me! Just when I thought I'd disarmed him, he finds something else. Even a screwdriver can kill with enough force behind it. Run, Karisu! Karisu glances at me, but she doesn't move. Why won't she run away? Papa. This is crazy, Papa! Please stop! What do you know? What do you know? Nakabachi has completely lost his mind. Nothing she can say will reach him. If only you would never been born! Oh my god, what a dick. Nakabachi turns to Kurisu, brandishing his screwdriver. Ah! But Kurisu still doesn't run away! Kurisu! <laughs> oh no. Blood spurts from the arm Kurisu used to guard her face. Oh my gosh, she's going to die. I have to do something! I grab the knife firmly in my hands. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's gonna stab him. Kurisu won't die if I kill Nakabachi first. The image again! Stop getting in my way! I won't be tied to that past! I need to do this to change the future! To save Karisu! Nakabachi! Oh my god! As Nakabachi raises his arm for another blow, I thrust the knife at his unprotected back! No! Oh, oh my god! Through the knife, my hand feels resistance. The sens sens ba sensation of tearing through flesh, scraping bone. You just stabbed Karisu. It's surprisingly tough. But at the same time, I feel the flesh pulsating. It shifts in time with my victim's breath. You just stabbed Karisu. I stabbed Karisu. Oh my god! Oh no! I 
stabbed. Why? Can't believe my eyes. What happened? He tried to stab Nakabachi. The blade should have pierced his back. And yet... Oh my gosh, Carissa! At the last minute, Carissa forced herself between us. As if... As if to protect Nakabachi! <laughs> Why? Strength drains from Carissa's body. She slumps against me. Her hand on my shoulder. Her head on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> A fitting end for you fools. <laughs> what the hell? He still doesn't care. Oh my gosh. And then he ran away. Laughing maniacally, Nakabachi picks up the drop thesis and runs to the elevator at the far end of the hall. I can't chase him. I know what's going to happen if I don't stop him, but I can't take a single step. It's okay, we'll try again. Is this the joke? Is this the punchline? I wanted to know who killed Karisu. It was you. And now... I'm sorry. Karisu speaks. Her voice is barely a whisper. Please don't let it end like this. I feel something wet on my hands. Wet and warm. Blood. Yeah, it's everywhere. Carissa's blood. Gushing from her wound. It's warm, but not hot. And yet, it feels like it's burning my hands. I try to pull the knife out. If I can stop the bleeding, maybe she'll be okay. But my hands won't move. It's like they've turned into stone. My arms, my fingers. No matter how hard I try, they won't move an inch. Oh no. <laughs> Carissa! Carissa's breathing quickly grows labored. She's suffering. I didn't mean for this to happen. This isn't what I wanted. Why won't my hands move? I want to pull out the knife. I want to ease her pain. Why won't my body obey me? It's as if someone else is in control. Carissa's body convulses against mine. The pain must be unbearable. I mean, even if you take the knife out, it'll still hurt. Is there nothing I can do to help her? I want to cry. Oh no. Why? The only thing I can do is ask. Because he's still my father. Oh. I'm so sad. I just wanted him to accept me. I'm gonna cry. I studied so hard, hoping he would. But now I finally understand. Papa didn't want to accept me. I'm such an idiot. Oh, Kirisu. Why did I save him? I wonder. I'm sorry for getting you involved. Oh, man. It hurts. Of course. I'm going to die. I don't want to die. I don't want it to end like this. Her voice is fading fast. Don't die. Please don't die on me. My prayers are in vain. Help me. Help. Oh my gosh. Her body suddenly grows heavy. I can no longer hear the sound of her breathing. And yet the blood from her wound is still warm. Oh my gosh. I killed her. I killed her! I'm the one who killed Karisu! The one who killed Karisu was me! 
Oh my god. Holy shit. As I scream, another me looks down from above. Oh shit. As he hears the sound of my despair, the last piece of the puzzle clicks into place. The scream I heard that day was my own. Do not end it like that. Uncle Okarin! Someone pulls at my arm. Come on! Get up! I feel hands slip under my shoulders and drag me away. The knife in my hands pulls free of Karisu's chest. A fresh turn to blood follows it. Still warm. Please. Open your eyes, Karisu. Wake up! Pull yourself together! We need to get out of here before they find us! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to kill you. I tried to save you. I did. Why is this happening? Someone puts my arm over their shoulder and hauls me to my feet, then drags me away step by step. Suzuha, I don't have the strength to resist. Guilt and regret uh, are the only things inside of me. I killed Karisu twice. Oh my gosh. And she's like, come on, we're, we're trying again. <sighs> Let's get out of here. Don't give up yet, uncle. Everything's gonna be fine. I promise. Now hold on tight. I feel someone push me hard from behind. Next, they take the knife away. My fingers are like a rock. They have to be pried open one by one. I failed to save Karisu. Worse, convergence made me kill her. The past has already been decided. It was impossible to change it from the start. Oh no. Someone drags me out of the time machine. I crumple on the spot, powerless to even stand. Whoa! You're already back! It hasn't even been a minute! Oh my god, Suzuha brought you back to your original timeline? I thought she would have went back and been like, okay, try again! I guess he needs time to recover, though. Oh, Karen. Probably covered in blood. Oh, Karen! My Yuri rushes over to me. She looks at my face in concern. But even her concern is too much for me to bear. Please don't talk to me. Just leave me alone. Whoa, you're covered in blood! What happened? Get him a towel, Dad. And water. And some clothes, too. Hurry! Huh? 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 An explanation, por favor! Just go already! Oh, okay! Oh my gosh. Taru runs back inside the building. Are you okay? Hang in there! Don't die! He's not hurt. He's okay. It's not his blood. Leave me alone. I don't deserve your concern. Save Karisu. What a joke. Not only did I fail to save her, I took her life with my own two hands. Oh no, three weeks ago in this very spot. I killed her. I murdered her. There's no way to save her. There never was. <laughs> Everything has already been decided. It's the same as it was with Mayuri. The same. No matter how hard I struggle, the result will be the same. We have a time machine. Shouldn't we give it another try? Yes! No, it's not that simple. No matter how many times I try, the result will... Con converge on Greaser's death. Even if I throw the knife away, fate will find some other way to kill Karizu. Oh my gosh, maybe Nakabachi will kill her. Maybe I'll trip and push her down the stairs. Maybe she'll just drop dead for no reason. 
The cause doesn't matter. The effect will always be the same. It doesn't matter if I time leap or if I time travel. Ah, going to the past can't change the result. Maybe a D-mail could shift divergence enough to take to another attractor field, but there's no way to control what might happen. D-mail is a shot in the dark. It's useless. Unless... Useless. Everything is useless. There's nothing I can do. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, man. I can't save Karisu after all. <laughs> oh my gosh, Ogrin. I knew that this would happen. I knew it would turn out like this. I can't take this anymore. I'm so tired. Enough already. I give up. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, Gabriel! Oh, Whoa! A burning numbness spreads through my cheek. Oh my God! My Yuri hit me. Whoa. She's never done anything like this before. Yeah, she's telling you, don't give up. Go again. The shock is enough to bring me to my senses. Oh, my Yuri looks at me with tears streaming down her cheeks. Her small body gently embraces mine. So I'm still covered in Karisu's blood, and now the side of your face hurts as well. Oh, Karin, you're not a quitter. Mayushi knows you never ever give up, not until the very end. Oh, remember? Every day, Mayushi prayed for help in front of Granny's grave. And every day, you came to see me. Even on rainy days and snowy days, you always stood next to my Yushi and called my name. Because you were always there for my Yushi. I finally, I was finally able to say goodbye to Granny. <sighs> Mayushi doesn't really understand what's going on, but don't give up now, okay? Mayushi doesn't want to see you sad. Mm, Mayuri's gentle warmth envelops me. I cling to that warmth, but it's not enough to heal my heart. Oh, my heart. But I killed her. You didn't mean to go again! The person most precious to me, who I wanted desperately to save, I killed her! Oh, Karin. I can still feel the knife in my hand. I can still feel her fading heartbeat. I look at my hands over my Yuri shoulder. They're red with blood. Carissa's blood. The shaking won't stop. Tears fall, washing away the blood. Guilt and despair are tearing my soul. If Suzuha hadn't taken the knife, I might have slit my own throat in that very spot. Oh my god. This reality is too much to bear. But I realize that this re this is retribution. My just punishment for taking the godlike power of time travel and using it to destroy the past. Risu can't be saved. That has been proven beyond a doubt. At the very least, I can't save her. Not even with Mayuri's encouragement. There's nothing I can do. You're wrong. Suzuha speaks, her voice full of conviction, and immediately afterwards... I hear a familiar melody! My male tone! Huh? Hello? Mayuri takes my phone out of her pocket. She's been looking after it. Oh yeah, I tried to take it out immediately and then I was like, why won't it come out? You got a mail, Okarin. Mayuri gently puts my phone into my hand. I don't have the energy to check my mail, but for some reason, Suzuha gestures for me to look at it. 
Is it from Kurisu? I reluctantly open my inbox. Turn on the TV. What? Turn on the TV? I pass Kurisu. That's all it says. The sender is unfamiliar. Is this a prank? Scam? Spam? Not scam. Spam? <laughs> I'm bewildered. I don't know who sent this. Probably Kurisu. But then I happen to glance at the send time, and the shock is like a lightning bolt to the brain. The date it was sent. August 21st, 2025. 2025? No, is this... It doesn't even occur to me to wonder if my phone has malfunctioned. After all, I know this phenomenon. A D-mail! I look up at Suzuha. She sees my confusion and looks at my phone. It actually came through, just like he said it would. Okay, so it's Daru, I guess. Judging by her surprise, I guess she doesn't know much. Suzuha leapt from 2036. That's 11 years after this email was sent. Does that mean it's not related to her? What does it mean? Well, maybe it is Karisu then. There must be something on. Something you need to see. Hey guys! I bought the I brought the stuff! Daru comes back with the convenience store bag. Right on time! Fortunately, my phone has TV reception. As soon as I switch it on, I see a news reporter standing in some foreign airport. There's a jumbo jet in the background. Looking closer, uh, I see burns near the plane's tail. The caption says, fire on Russian airlines. Russian authorities announced today that a fire broke out on Russian airlines F flight 800 en route from Narita to Moscow. The flight departed Narita Airport at 11.05 Japan time, but a fire broke out on the cargo holds sh shortly before arrival. So it's not Karisu. The flight made an emergency landing in Domodedovo International Airport, where the passengers were evacuated. No one was injured. One of the passengers on Flight 801 was a Japanese physicist who had declared his intention to seek asylum in Russia. The screen changes, and the camera cuts to what appears to be the airport lobby. A man is standing there surrounded by reporters. When I see his face, my breath catches in my throat. Is Kurisu dead? There he is! Dr. Nakabachi! Dr. Nakabachi, real name Makize Sh Shoichi, made these comments to the press earlier today. I still haven't recovered from the shock of murdering Kurisu. The images on TV seem like something from a dream. Did they say Nakabachi sought asylum in Russia? I didn't think people still did that in this day and age. I mean, all you need is a passport to travel to Russia. To travel to Russia? I'm delighted to have arrived safely in this wonderful country. My deepest gratitude to the Russian government for accepting me. What happened on the plane? Read the subtitles at the bottom of the screen. When the cabin filled with smoke, I remained perfectly calm. Some passengers panicked, but they settled down after I gave them a talking to. Nakabachi responds confidently. He certainly doesn't look like a man who could strangle his own daughter. My compliments to the pilot for a safe landing. He's a hero, for he saved not only my life, but my historic thesis as well. Oh, you little. The subtitles change to, is that thesis related to your request for asylum? Nakabachi nods, theatrically. <laughs> Indeed, if this thesis had been lost, it would have set scientific progress back a century. That's why they say Kurisu was the reason why the time machine was built. This thesis will change the course of human history. You're such a dick. Oh, I hate him. What is your thesis about? This thesis describes the first practical theory of time travel. Do you understand? Time travel! I, Dr. Nakabachi, have succeeded where countless others have failed. You bomb! Nakabachi's tone quickly grows feverish. Now he's talking directly to the camera. 
Moreover, he's not talking about the accident at all. He's just promoting his research. He presents something to the camera. It's the envelope, the one that Kurisu gave him. This envelope contains the future of mankind. Soon all of our dreams shall be realized. When I present this thesis to the scientific community, the world will change forever, and I will be known as the father of the time machine. What a dick. I have no right to condemn Nakabachi for his actions. Not when it was my hand that t took Kurisu's life. Listen, you were trying to save Kurisu Okaran. But at the same time, I can't stop myself from recalling the words Kurisu spoke. That hurt, betrayed, betrayed tone that triggered Nakabachi's violence. You're stealing my work? I didn't even think you would do something like... Mm. Do those words not echo in his ears too? How could he stand there and present his murdered daughter's work as if it were his own, and look so proud of himself while doing it? I hear my teeth grinding in my head. Originally, the envelope was in my checked baggage. If it had stayed there, it would have all burnt up in the cargo hold, and humanity's dreams along with it. However, fate intervened on my behalf, as if God himself had decreed that my greatness would be shown across the world. That's not even your great greatness, buddy. Nakabachi thrusts his open hand at the camera. Behold, the vessel of God's grace, because this was inside the envelope. It set off the metal detector. As a result, I had to take the envelope with me on the plane. The pilot is a hero, yes, but the true hero, 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 the true hero, the survivor of humanity's future, is this tiny figurine. Sitting on the palm of his hand is a lump of silvery metal, barely five centimeters tall. Ah! Mayuri? Mayuri points at the screen! Is it Yupa? Or Upa? I look closer. The lump of metal in Nakabachi's hand. It's not just any lump of metal. It's a Yupa? I knew it! That's my metal Yupa! Look! See there? It has Mayushi's name on it! Oh yeah, she lost it, like in the beginning. Yupa is a mascot character from the popular card game Rhina Axis Ballers. Yeah, we know that. You can see Yupa's merchandise everywhere in Akihabara, from capsule toys to phone straps and other accessories. But uh, of all Yupa merchandise, the most rare is the metal Yupa. It's the very same metal Yupa that Nakabachi is presenting to the camera. Near the bottom of the metal Yupa, I can see cute letters written in bright red magic marker. The letters read, Mayushis! Oh, you're right! What's he doing with it? I dropped it during the presentation. I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find it. So that's where it went. Oh, I can't get back if it's all the way in Russia. Oh, man. Oh, Ogren? Are you okay? I stare at the screen in disbelief. My body is shaking. Goosebumps break out over every inch of flesh. I know what this is. Butterfly. The butterfly effect. Oh. Three weeks ago, Mayuri dropped her metal yupa in the assembly hall of Rod Icon. That tiny figurine, a mere child's toy, went on to decide the fate of mankind. It rescued the Nakabachi paper from the fire. And in so doing, it laid the foundation for World War III. So you just gotta stop Mayuri from dropping it? Uzuha, did you know about this? What? Uzuha answers with a look of apology. Why didn't you tell him? Who sent that email from 2025? Whoever it was clearly meant for us to see the news about Dr. Nakabachi. Sorry. Sorry about what? What was she apologizing for? Sorry for not telling you everything. Why didn't you? But we needed you to fail once. You had to experience Mikize Karisu's death firsthand. Oh my god, you had to traumatize him first? What? <laughs> you tricked me? 
Why was that necessary? Not exactly. It was part of the plan. At least, that's what I was told. Told? By whom? Daru, probably. I'm sorry for making you go through that, uncle. Oh, man. Tell me what's going on. Mm. Seek for yourself. Suzaha points to the phone in my hand. <sighs> then you'll understand. What are you talking about? Message should already be on your phone. The message you sent from 2025. Oh, that was him to himself. Holy moly. What? A video mail. A video mail? Oh. You received one, didn't you? When, when was that? Huh? She's right. When was that again? I don't know. July 28th, right after I met Karisu for the first time. Just as I was about to contact my Yuri, I received a mysterious video mail from an address I'd never seen before. Is that what she's talking about? But there was nothing on it. Just noise. Try again. Try again? Suzuha grins. If you try now after failing once to save Makize Karisu's life, you should be able to see it. What? Why Why is it unlocked in that way? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Is that even possible? That's what I'm wondering. Okay. Uh, hello, future Okarin. What are you wanting to say? I'm not convinced, but I check my phone anyway to be sure. And there, I find the saved video mail. When I check the sender's address, I realize it's the same address as the D-mail just now. So they're from the same person. And this person is me in 15 years? 15 years. 2025. The year I die, according to Suzuha. I sent this message on the eve of my death. A message to myself in 2010. Suzuha said that there was a plan to reach Stein's gate. Could that plan be in this video? My Yuri and Daru peek over my shoulder. What is he going to look like? I take a deep breath. I press play with a trembling finger. Hello? Nothing appears on the screen but noise. Nothing has changed after all. No, keep watching. Maybe it'll change. There's no hidden message or anything. Oh, there he is. The noise suddenly dissolves, revealing the silhouette of a man. That's you. It looks like the video was shot somewhere dark. I can barely see the man's face. That's you. I can tell your silhouette, Okarin. Unkempt hair, a lab coat. That's all I can make out. Is this you in 15 years? It has to be. Something about him just says Okarin. Yeah, maybe his unkempt hair. <laughs> really? Is this guy really me? My phone's tiny screen has become a window onto the future. I can't believe I'm about to hear a message from myself. Did you get my email? And then go watch the news. If you already have, then keep listening. Okay. So the last mail was from him. From me. It doesn't feel real. Greetings. It's been 15 years. I suppose you could say. Whoa. Wow. Your voice is so deep and cool. <laughs> yes, it's really deep. The year is 20... The year is 2025. I'm sending this video by a process similar to D-mail. Okay. You dismantled the phone wave. So did I. But not one year later. I, which is to say, you, turned back to time travel as my last hope. Whoa. Sorry, sorry, future Ogrin. He's talking very delicately. 
I spent 14 years researching time travel. Along the way, I managed to design a D-mail trans transmitter that wasn't bound by the 36-byte limit. The fact that you're watching this means that you... You, you're, you failed to save Karisu. Oh no, don't, don't remind them. It hurts, doesn't it? I know how you feel. After all, I went through it myself. 15 years ago. That's right. I failed too. Okay. I've lived with that failure for 15 years. Do you understand why you had to fail? you did it was necessary necessary to give me the proper motivation motivation you failed to save Karisu you killed her with your own two hands your guilt your self-loathing have driven me for 15 years they gave me the focus I needed to complete the plan without your failure you would not be watching this message right now. As you know, the world line is subject to attractor field convergence. Time travel alone cannot save Karisu. Uh huh. That's why you had to fail to create the chain of casualty that linked you to me. Because you failed. I spent the last 15 years researching time travel. Okay. As the revelations Nakabachi unleashed sped the world towards nuclear war, I continued my research in secret. Suzuha's time machine is the result. Although the finishing touches were Daru's and mine, its design was based on the theory that CERN first developed. And that Karisu improved on the world line you undid. Its model number is C204. C for Christina. I believe you understand what that signifies. She's a lie? Now that the casual link has been established, allow me to explain the final stage of the plan. Okay? The purpose of this plan is to change divergence and reach the unknown world line called Stein's Gate. Uh-huh. By the way, I'm the one who named it Stein's Gate. You of all people know why I chose that name. I he had no idea. <laughs> because it sounds cool. Isn't that right? <laughs> there are two conditions you must meet to reach Stein's Gate. Okay? First, you must save Makize Kurisu. Second, you must destroy the Nakabachi paper. And maybe nobody has to die. Maybe you just destroy that paper and you're fine. I know you're thinking. Convergence won't let you change the past. No matter what you do, Kurisu will die. But rest assured, there is a way. You can save Kurisu. Ooh. Listen carefully. On July 28th, the first you went to Nakabachi's presentation blissfully unaware of what was about to happen. You must not change what you first saw. Those events have been established. They are upon which this world line converges. However, there is room for deception. You don't understand, I know. Calm down. I'll explain. Deception? You're going to deceive yourself? You're going to deceive yourself. Yeah, I, I got that. But first you saw Karisu lying in a pool of blood. If you were to change that fact, it would render everything you have done since, as well as everything I have done, a paradox. Okay. After finding Karisu's body, you sent a email, which was intercepted by Ekalong, which tipped off CERN. Uh-huh. Recall your experience on the Alpha World Line. 
You saw more than just Mayuri's death. Uh huh. You saw Carissa alive and well. You made her a lab member despite her protests. And together, you built the Time Leap Machine. Uh huh. It was only three weeks, but she was there, beside you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Those memories are yours. Those memories are mine. They are proof that we did not live only on this world line, where Karisu died on July 28th. Okay. You traveled to the Alpha world line. You met Karisu and fell in love. Fell in love! <laughs> you sacrificed the dreams of those closest to you. But still, you fought to give Mayuri a future. Uh huh. For three weeks you fought, and now those memories are part of you. If you had not seen Carissa's body in the hallway of Rod Icon, you would not have sent that first email. Serum would not have found you. When you encountered Carissa later, you would not have been shocked to see her alive. You would not have spoken the words that led her to your doorstep. Without those memories, you would not now be willing to travel through time to save her. Okay. I would not have spent my life searching for a path to Stein's Gate. I understand. I would not have recorded this message. I know! Daru and I would not have completed the time machine. Okay! Suzuha would not be standing beside you right now. Listen, I'm not stupid! <laughs> Listen! You must not reject the three weeks you've spent in between world lines. You must not undo the past. What? Those three weeks you made you who you are. A man who would do anything to save the woman he loves. The woman he loves? <laughs> of course! Your desperation made me who I am. A man who has given everything to make that dream come true. Uh-huh. This moment would not have been possible if not for the memories that you and I share. Uh-huh. The man you were trying to create. A man with none other than those memories to drive him, them could never stand where you stand now. It all meant something. My preparations, my pre my preparations are complete. The rest is up to you. The final phase of Operation Scald will now commence. Wait, but what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Your mission: change the outcome without changing established events. Uh, rip up the ladder. <laughs> you didn't see the ladder, so you rip it up, right? You saw Makize Kurisu lying in a pool of blood. That has been established. But at the same time, only that has been established. Deceive yourself! Deceive the world! That is the choice which will lead you to Stein's Gate. Good luck, mad scientist. L. Psy. Kong group. Okay, bye! <laughs> and with that, the video ends! Mayuri and Daru look dumbfounded. They obviously didn't understand a single word. I, however. <laughs> okay, enough laughing, let's go! <laughs> Laughter bubbles up from the depths of my soul! Not minutes ago, I was lost in despair. I was ready to, to, to yep, to unalign myself for what I have done, but now I'm laughing! I mean, you were laughing even when you were feeling that way too, so... He's laughing! Operation Scold? Elsai Kung Ru? I'm 33 years old and I still have no shame! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deceive myself? Deceive the world? That's such chuny bullshit! It's pathetic, laughable, a juvenile fantasy. But at the same time, it feels right. Let's go! Very well. 
If this is the choice of Steins Gate, then so be it. I am the insane mad scientist, Hyonin Gyoma, deceiving the world as child's play. It looks like I have to change the world after all. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Whoa, I thought Ogrim was finally turning serious, but now he's back to his usual antics. Even though he's all covered in blood, it was kind of creepy. <laughs> but you know, my Yoshi likes Ogrim better this way. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. Okrin just isn't Okrin unless he's laughing like an idiot. Yon and Kyoma saved my Yoshi, you know. Uh huh. So this time, he'll definitely save Makise Karisu. Aww. But to save the world? What's that supposed to mean? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Um. Mayushi doesn't have a clue. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? What? Are you supposed to pretend that Karisu is dead? The only established fact about the past is that I saw Karisu lying in a pool of blood. That's the extent of my observation. Karisu was lying in a pool of blood. As for whether she was alive or dead... That's still open to interpretation. Yeah, okay, okay, I get it. Isn't that right, future me? He's like, yeah, Okarin, yeah, we're so smart. Huh? Mayuri tilts her head. She still doesn't get it. For example, just think of it like this. No, you got to explain it. No, let's just go. Karisu was merely unconscious and the blood was just a coat of red paint. Okay, that was a quick explanation. Oh, is that what happened? Mayuri's eyes open wide in wonder. I give up. She's not going to understand. <laughs> Wait a second. The news reports all said that she was... What's true now doesn't matter. Only what Uncle Okarin saw on July 28th matters. Oh, okay. R really? Really, and that's because I'm not the Okabe Rentaro who lived in the Beta world line after Karisu died. I traveled to the Alpha world line and back. I'm not bound by whatever effect Karisu's death... Karisu's death may have had during that time. What I'm going to do is recreate what I saw, and only what I saw. But this time, I'll do it so Karisu doesn't have to die. Don't forget, you also need to destroy the Nakabachi paper. Can you handle it? Who do you think you're talking to, part-time warrior? Just gonna be like, what does that mean? Part-time warrior? Have you forgotten? I am the insane mad scientist, Yonin Kyoma! I disregard the blank stares of my comrades and brush back my hair with a flourish. My plan is flawless. Operation Scold will succeed. Whatever you say, Okarin. But I need to prepare. Give me 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Suzuha tightens her expression and nods firmly. Oh, okay. 30 minutes. You gonna bring paint with you? I squat against the roof's chain fence with my eyes closed. To refresh my memory, I pull out the drawers of my mental archive and sort through each file one by one. I wish I could do that. <laughs> the, my actions that day, my Yuri's actions, my conversations with Karisu, Nakabachi's presentation. Look at Karisu. With those memories to guide me, I begin to draw up my plan for how to complete my mission. Okay. Okay, man! I got the stuff! Thank you, my Yuri. I open my eyes once I hear my Yuri's vo yes. voice. Then it's time. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's save Karizu. I take a deep breath and stand up. My Yuri's faster on her feet than Daru and I are, so I got her to pick up some things for me. She went all the way to the lab and back in, swel in the sweltering heat, but she's not even breathing hard. She runs up to me with a triumphant smile. 
almost like a playful puppy shaking her tail. There you go. Will this work? In her hand is a plastic stick about 30 centimeters long. I take it and nod in satisfaction. Good work, Mayuri. <laughs> Mayushi's happy to be useful to Okarin. So wait, how are you going to make her wound look like a stab wound? Oh, I also brought you this. She hands me a banana. <laughs> I guess she's telling me not to time travel on an empty stomach. I wonder if it's going to turn into a gel banana. <laughs> or it's going to be the first banana to go come back whole. What's that? A banana! No, I mean that stick! It's not a stick! It's a sword! Uh, okay. <laughs> it's a sword! That, that's a light stick. <laughs> One of our lab's many inventions! Future gadget number six! The Siloom Saber! Saber! Siloom Saber? It's a red Siloom glow stick! An essential item for idol and voice actress concerts! But it's not just a glow stick! It's a saber shaped! Just as the name implies! So you can reenact scenes from Spark Wars! Okay. <laughs> so it's a giant glow stick. Um. Wow! <laughs> Furthermore! It can also form fake blood clots, detach the cap at the tip, and thick blood starts flowing out. I... okay. I, uh, really don't get what you're trying to accomplish when you made this. We wanted to make our sword fights feel more realistic. <laughs> what he means to say is that everything is inevitable. I think I see the plan. You're gonna use that Siloom stuff as a stand-in for Makiza Kreese's blood, aren't you? Precisely. I mean, if it can make a puncture wound, then yeah, sure. I stuff my cheeks with banana, enraptured by my own genius. Ah, oh, no, it's not going with us to the past. I truly am a mad scientist. <laughs> okay, let's go. Put the Siloom Saber into my pocket. It's about 30 centimeters long, so it sticks out a little, but I don't mind. I had Daru buy me a stun gun earlier. I pocket that too! You're gonna stun her and then then pretend to stab her? With this, my preparations are complete! Oh my gosh, I give Sutoha a glance. Hopefully she doesn't die via stun gun. Let's go, Uncle Okarin. One more time! One more trip to July 28th. There and back. That's all the fuel we have left. This is our last chance. Okay. You ready? Leave it to me. I will change the world. <laughs> <laughs>